I don't know about you, but road harky is certainly an essential part of managing traffic in a city, yet it can create such boring uniform grids with no character, no unique personality. Like, come on. This... this makes me sad. Hey yo everyone and welcome to another episode of Pine Harbor County, a City Skylines 2 Let's Play where we will use and abuse the new operating district mechanic found within the service building tab. I hope everyone has had a wonderful week and is excited for today's episode as we will be expanding our first city and progressing to the large village milestone. I was thinking we may name our first city Spoose Junction to pay homage to the tree exports this county will grow to have. If you like this name for the area or have a name suggestion, let me know in the comments below. Awesome sauce, without further delay, let's jump right into building. So we're going to start out right away by purchasing some expansion tiles. So I want these areas to the right here to expand our industry area and prep the area for harbor and cargo hub and I want these tiles over here to expand our current population and entice additional business owners to open up shop. We'll also need space for an elementary school and a high school, which I'm thinking we'll place on this side over here. So next, I want to spend some development points on unlocking the large roads node. When I am applying the rules of road hierarchy, I like my arterial roads to be larger with about six lanes, my connector roads to be three asymmetrical or four lane roads, and my local roads to be the two lanes or even actually the alleys that we now have access to in the new game. Awesome, now that we have that unlocked, let's go through and upgrade all the roads that will lead to other counties in this um, general area so that they are all the six lane arterial roads. Quilio, while we're in this area, let's quickly take the liberty of shifting the medical center to the left as I want to eventually be able to put a roundabout here. And we're going to just pop it right there for now. And I'm going to put a roundabout in also, just so we are reminded to upgrade it to, you know, probably a large or at least a medium down the line. I'm doing this because I know these arterials will get backed up eventually once this one gets expanded down and this one expanded out. So the roundabout is going to hopefully fix our flow. Then I'm also going to come in here really quickly and fix some zoning havoc I accidentally caused. Okay, that'll work now for just a temporary moment. Uh, eventually we're going to be building in this area, so I'll probably destroy it all again anyway. <laughs> All right, so next let's lay out our arterial roads. I want one arterial road to cross over the train tracks right here, and I do want it to be an arterial and only one so that we're decreasing our conflict points with the train track. After our arterial roads are built, I want to place our connectors and I want one connector to actually bridge over the couplet system this is not only going to provide an additional connection from this side of the couplet to this side and provide access to the industry area, but it'll also decrease the congestion on the arterial up here um, as it's currently the only connection. So we're going to want to uh, disperse that traffic a bit. So I did take the liberty really quickly to move our power lines to the side here so that they 
they weren't in the way. And then I just want to zoom in and admire this. Yeah, it's not completely centered. I don't know why normally this would uh, drive me insane, but I kind of like it. Um, it's just such a beautiful bridge. Go away, Trevor. Just beautiful. Beautiful. All right. So the next part we are going to work on is laying out our local roads. This is honestly probably one of my favorite parts because this is when you can get very unique in the road layout. Um, I keep doing that. There we go. So yeah, let's uh, jump right into doing some local roading. Alright, so finally, I like to build pedestrian paths and walkways around this time. I'm not sure if pedestrian paths are technically considered in the principles of road hierarchy. However, I do believe that in-game pedestrian access greatly reduces the traffic. So, I want to start by coming in right here and connecting up this area. Alright, because in our last episode we unlocked education, I want to focus on that next. So I want to place our elementary school and our high school in a strategic location um, that complements the road layout that we just put in, as well as provides the best coverage. So I do want to do this area right down here, but I may need to do a little bit of terraforming and a little bit of reconfiguring. I want to put it right in the middle here. Yeah, so let's jump in here. Let's delete, delete, and school, and poop. And then come back in with a path and fix the havoc. So 
So I went ahead and plopped the high school also. However, for now, I am going to turn the high school off. Um, as I don't think we need it this early in the game. And we are uh, bleeding quite a bit of money here. I'm also going to zone this area with commercial buildings as my understanding of the new citizen needs leads me to believe that leisure and shopping are important to the citizens happiness. Because we already have established accessibility to the residential areas of the city, this commercial space will strategically provide those residential areas with leisure and shopping accessibility as well. Awesome, so let's work on our industry area next. Industry can be a beastly monster on traffic flow, but the principles of road hierarchy still apply and prevent traffic congestion and chaos. So for this area to the left, I'm going to repeat what we did earlier and start laying everything out with road hierarchy. So when considering road hierarchy and industry, I like to start with where I'm gonna be laying out my cargo transport. I do this because cargo transport will create a heavy amount of traffic and thus I want it to easily access arterial or highway roads. While we don't have cargo harbors or trains unlocked yet, I already know that I do want to place it in this area right here. So I am just going to come on real quick with a dirt road and just roughly draw in a section right here so that I remember this will be where the harbor is. Next, let's prep our regional highway connection. We could build a custom interchange, but I was really excited to start using the custom interchanges that the game now provides. In particular, I'm excited to use the trumpet roundabout, which will give us a couplet system that we can feed right into the cargo hub. And this roundabout will also feed into our existing hierarchy. So let's have a quick zoning time lapse and let the simulation run a bit so that we can actually make it to the next milestone and purchase the highway and the intersection nodes in the development tree. Awesome, so now that we have the Grand Village, let's build our road networks for the industry on this side of the couplet system. And we're gonna start actually by coming in here. I just wanna purchase uh, this tile very quickly so we have a little bit more space. And let's come on in to our development tree. Let's get highways and intersections. All right, let's jump right in to doing a quick uh, road hierarchy for the industry. Time lapse.
Alright everyone, so we did a couple of different things here. This particular layout is a little bit more grid than I normally would prefer. However, it's going to be in an industrial park and an office park, so I think for now we're going to be able to get away with it. I did do a few different things though, so let's dive on into it. For starters, I made this main arterial here a two-way road, connecting it here and running the connector from the residential side of the couplet right on in. I also made sure that we had some one-way roads to kind of help with the traffic flow, extended the area over here, and then repositioned the transformer station just so I could get a, a clean um, high voltage line in here. So yeah, pretty, uh, pretty straightforward on this one. I also decided that instead of putting the harbor area over here, it might make more sense to put it right here. We'll still have the outside connection that we're looking for, and I'm thinking we might be able to do some fun terraforming. Up here, it's going to be very, very tight, and eventually I'm going to want to elevate and maybe reposition the train line right here so that we can fix some more zoning up here and maybe some um, services. So speaking of services, I think this is going to be a good opportunity to plop our road maintenance building. So I'm going to come on in here, grab the road maintenance building, and let's find a good spot for it. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Yeah, okay. So I think right here is going to give us some pretty decent coverage. I am going to orientate it like so. Overlapping items, what are we overlap? Oh, of course we are overlapping our power lines. Really want it right here though. Yeah, we're going to do it. Pop that right there. Come back in. Wonder if these will actually... <laughs> of course they will go over each other. Oh, I love that. I love that layering is a thing in City Skylines too. Alright everyone, now that we have everything laid out, let's have a beautifying the build time lapse and get everything looking all nice and pretty. Alright everyone, so that concludes this week's episode of Pine Harbor County. I hope everyone enjoyed, and if you did, please consider hitting that like button below. If you want to continue watching Pine Harbor County grow, please consider subscribing and enabling your notifications. And don't forget to leave your comments down below with what you believe this area should be named. 
Until next time, I hope you have a phenomenal rest of your weekend.